Hello everyone, welcome to week two of the readathon. Readathon. That's actually a big tongue twister. Anyway, last week I finished three books of the 12 books that I plan to read this month and I read The Prompt for a Sin book, The Prompt for a book that starts with a, with a letter R, R, and then a book with purple on the cover. So this week, I don't know what I'm reading. I am going to use the number generator to kind of, you know, tell me what I'm going to read. I will not be putting Shadow and Bone on the generator because next week I'm reading it with my best friend uh, as a buddy read so that's going off that means I only have one two three four five six seven eight prompts well yeah that I need to read for this week but obviously it's probably just going to be three again it sounds doable through a week so we're going to the number generator so minimum is one book maximum is eight book and then we're going to cover our eyes and say generate Number four. Okay, okay. I don't know if I was ready for this, but we're gonna go with Pretty Girls from Karen Slaughter. And this is basically a murder mystery. We follow Claire Scott, whose eldest sister went missing like 20 years ago. And nobody knows where she went. They couldn't find a body. They couldn't find anything about her elder sister. It, it became a cold case. Now, 20 years later, there's another girl who's gone missing. And it's kind of like the same modus operandi than her elder sister when she disappeared. So Claire determined not to let this happen to another family. She decides that she's going to start investigating the disappearance. And while she's investigating it, she comes across stuff that makes a question a lot of things that is the blurb ah uh, so i'm hoping to fly through this book i don't know how many are we gonna go with pages or are we gonna go with chapter 24 yeah okay so there's 25 chapters unless there's a prologue as well i'm assuming there's 26 chapters <laughs> yeah okay so 26 divided by three is a whole lot <laughs> it's like eight points up so that are we gonna go with 533 pages for three days. I think it works out around the same. Okay, so it's around the same, either or, you know, it doesn't matter. So I think that is what I'm planning on doing. I'm excited. I am always excited to read the books and then when I realize I don't like them, I'm just like, meh. I was excited about this book. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to start with this book and I'll bring you along for the journey. Hey everyone, what well, happy Monday. <laughs> I just forgot what day it is. So I reached page 90 of Pretty Girls and I have so many questions. Um, this is really not a spoiler, but because you learn it in the first chapter. Claire's husband dies in the first chapter. In the second chapter, we follow Lydia. And I don't know, I have theories, but I'm too scared to say it. But because just now it's going to be spoilers and I don't want it to be. Lydia was just happy that Claire's husband died. And she ends the chapter with, I hope he suffered. And I'm just like, what did this man do to you that you want him to suffer? And then in the third chapter, we follow Claire after she buried her husband. And someone broke into her house. So now she's with detectives and she's scouring the place with them. And eventually she's just like, you know what? Um, her husband did all of the work. So she's going to go to his computer and see maybe if she can sort out the insurance and stuff see if they have a list of inventory for their house because her husband was very punctual and very mild OCD so everything they bought he had a sticker for it he labeled it so obviously he has a register in his laptop or in his PC on his PC right preposition there um, to indicate what was there so that they, she can give it to the de detective and say this was stolen this wasn't stolen and she comes across something that first looks like a very kinky video which and it turns out to be really gory and gruesome and i'm just like who was your husband really like i'm very curious i'm i'm assuming this book is going to be very disturbing and um i'm not here for it but <laughs> anyway so i'm just i'm just preparing myself mentally for this i actually didn't want to read this book at first but it is on my 23 books to read for 2023 so you know we might as well just bite the bullet hey everyone I okay so today is tuesday um i've put i've put pretty girls on the back burner because i have a lot of stuff i have to do for work and i cannot find the audiobook for this well i can but it's in german and my german's not that strong and i'm not gonna sit here with 533 pages of german so um i think that's also a nice way to up my german but not today okay so the plan is to be listening to audiobooks probably for the rest of this week 
so that I can get my work done and then from next week on I will be you know diving into books because from next week I am on leave I'm sitting very close to the camera I'm so sorry anyway I decided to pick up a thousand pieces of you by Claudia Gray because I have the audiobook for that and yeah somehow along the line I'm really excited to read this book this actually is a book that intrigues me this book we follow Margaret I don't have a good relationship with people whose surnames are Kane but that's only because of the Kelly Armstrong series the Women of the Other World series anyway <laughs> not the point I'm trying to make so we're following Margaret Kane and she has been growing up with cutting edge technology both of her parents are scientists she's raised in a very futuristic kind of world and then her mom invents a dimensional portal from which you can jump through each dimension and it's called the Firebird hence the fact that this is called the Firebird trilogy so then one day her uh, Margaret's father's murdered and the only person who seems to be the guilty party is the student assistant that they hired that her parents hired um called Paul and together with one of her friends Theo she jumps through each dimension to go find Paul before the law gets him because just before uh Margaret's father was murdered Paul jumped through one of the dimensions so she's following him and with each jump through the dimension she starts to question Paul's guiltiness his innocence she starts to question whether Paul is actually guilty and maybe she just jumped to conclusions and now she's in an epic love story with I'm assuming Theo and Paul and she needs to decide who her heart wants to follow. So it's a good mystery love story kind of thing. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this so but I, I think it's going to be a very quick read. It is 360 but the text is pretty big and it's a very floppy book. I am in love with this book because it's so cool. But anyway, so uh, yeah, let's just jump right into A Thousand Pieces of You. still trying to wake up i have my large cup of coffee right here i'm gonna slam myself in the face with it but yeah reading is going the fact that i have half closed eyes says a lot but anyway i went to the gym yesterday and clutched out off the eight so everything's going great anyway um <laughs> hello get off thank you i have reached a hundred pages of a thousand skies above you do ignore my dragon <laughs> And this book is interesting. I don't know if you've ever experienced, how am I going to put this? You don't get a lot of information about how, her name's Marguerite, I thought it was Margaret. So you don't get a lot of information how Marguerite's father died. I had this strange imagery in my head that she found him and she saw Paul run off into one of the dimensions. I don't know where I got that from, but it's nowhere in the book, so I don't know. My imagination was wild that time. <laughs> in this book, we instantly jump to her jumping through dimensions, and we figure out that she is in London, and that unfortunately, in this world as well, her parents, as well as her elder sister, has died in a hovercraft crash or something like that. Details all fuzzy. At first she's alone and she thinks that she has to go to her aunt. And I think her aunt's name is Susanna. What struck me as weird is the fact that there's no double person. If she jumps through dimensions, she lands in the body of her self in that dimension. So that's an interesting take on it. I really think that is very interesting. Although it takes away the danger of should I be careful because I might just come across my other half in this dimension and then cause confusion. Of which I know there's a lot of stories that does that. So this is just something refreshing. And then 
I don't know, Theo, the person who's helping her look for her father, he's very suspicious to me. Like, he instantly knows how to wangle with the, the thing around their necks to make them travel through dimensions called a firebird. And he instantly knows how to work that. And he doesn't want to show her. Like, he keeps on telling her, leave it to me, I'll help you. And I'm just like, this man is very suspicious. And he does the weirdest things. He's a very reckless person, um, even in their dimension. He's been very reckless. And he keeps on accusing Paul of doing stuff that I think he's been doing. And then he just blames it on Paul. So I have a theory. I think Theo is the guilty one here. And Paul jumps through dimensions to get away from Theo. I don't know. I don't know. But it's going good so far. Um, but for now, Marguerite is still thinking that... Paul is the guilty one and she found him in this dimension now. She slipped away from Theo and she found him. And <laughs> I'm just freaking out like a high school girl because she said in the last part of the chapter, she goes, I glance over my shoulder as though looking for Theo would bring him back again. Which is when Paul Markov's hands clamp down over my mouth. My father's killer whispers, don't scream. And I'm like, so I will because woo, the tension between these two are just immaculate. I know they are in game. Like I know that. That is, it's it's been pieced together for us by the blurb. Thank you very much. So I know they are in game, but just the, the process that it's following, and I'm just like, mm, I'm like a child. <laughs> so um, I think I will probably read a few more pages, like a hundred more pages. So this is my part for today. <laughs> Dragon just chilling. Up until chapter 19, so I'm sure I can fly through this. It's it's an interesting read. I feel like I'm 15 again, <laughs> although I think I appreciate this book more. I don't know why, I just have this feeling that I do appreciate this book more in its essence now since I'm 25 instead of 15, because at 15, I think this book would have upset me. I have news. No, I have not finished it. It always looks like I have finished it when I smile this big. I reached chapter 19. The only problem is, right, I want to continue reading this book. I don't want to put it down, but I have to work, so... <laughs> Uh, and I know I'm listening to it, but there's points in my work where I have to listen to audio. So it's a continuous pause, listen, pause, listen. So it's quite distracting. Anyway, I have 130 pages left, of which I can easily finish. Because the audiobook, I think, is now only an hour long. So maybe I should just finish this. Let me continue. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I look fantastic. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with my hair, but apparently it's, 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 it's a Thursday kind of hair. Okay, anyway, I finished A Thousand Pieces of You. I don't know what's happening this month, but I am really enjoying the books that I'm reading, so I'm going to give this five stars. It was everything that my teenager heart wanted and never got in a book. It's kind of dystopian because it's set in the near future. It's got time travel, which I also enjoy. It's got fantastic characters, which is by far anything anyone could ever ask for. I did see one plot twist coming, you know, before a long time because something was just off for me. So I did figure that out long before. The love interest for the characters as well, I just... Morally great characters, as is everyone's preference, you know, just... I love it. I just love it. So I, like I say, I'm going to give this book a five stars. I am so excited to delve into the second and the third book. Although you can read this as a standalone, I don't think it's necessary to continue with the series. But if there's a trilogy, then by all means, I'm going to read it. So I'm going to continue, not with Pretty Girls, um, because who am I if I stick to my TBR? I'm going to read... What the River Knows. Um, I'll put a picture up here. I went again on a requesting spree on NetGalley and I got approved for this book. So naturally it's going to be part of my TBR. So I'm going to put it there. So it's basically The Mummy Meets Death on the Nile. The Mummy I'm assuming with Brandon Fraser. And this is basically an historical... F uh, <laughs> this is basically a historical fancy... Fa fancy. Okay. Fantasy. <laughs> set in the late 1900s or the 19th century so the 1800s okay natasha you need to learn to read so we follow a bolivian argentinian what's her name 
Inez Oliveira, good grief. Okay, so we follow her um, as she is set in this world where magic still exists. And, you know, there's there's magic elements in a lot of stuff that people find nowadays, but it's very small. And then her parents are usually in Egypt all the time because that is the place they love and that is where they find magical artifacts. And, you know, it's, it's a thing. And then one day, solicitor comes to her and they're like, your parents are dead. Because of this tragic news, she also inherit, inherits millions from her parents. And then she also receives like a, I won't say he's a ward, what did they call him? A mysterious guardian. He's like an archaeologist that worked with her parents. And together they're going to Kairu, because I can only say it in Afrikaans, to determine why her parents died. So I think it's going to be a good adventure. I, for one, love the mummy. I've never seen Death on the Nile, so... But yeah, I love the mummy, I love adventurous stories, and I think this is going to be a good read. Hey everyone, happy Monday. This is going to be a longer video, I realized, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, nobody's going to complain as long as I just upload videos. Anyway, so I'm just putting away some stuff. So I'm still busy with What the River Knows. It's not a bad book. It's just a very slow book currently. <laughs> it's like 451 pages and this past weekend it's just been crazy. So I didn't get a chance to fully immerse myself in the book. And today I'm on leave uh, for the next eight days. 10 days if you count the weekend as well, but we don't. Yeah, I've just been busy chilling, gathering some stuff. Um, so yeah, I will be reading What the River Knows. And because it's Monday, I am starting the buddy read with my best friend. So we're going to read Shadow and Bone <laughs> as well as I'm still busy with, I think, one other book. But it's fine. Um, but for today, I just think I'm going to chill and just read a bit of What the River Knows and Shadow and Bone. <laughs> okay, so let's make some French toast and we can carry about our day and also make a big cup of coffee because I've been waiting for the power to come on for like two hours now. <laughs> so, yes, come. We love you. <laughs> Thursday. Um, I got new hair yesterday and didn't film at all because I just wasn't in the mood for cameras or anything. I say that like the camera's always on. <laughs> We're jumping right back into Shadow and Bone. So I haven't updated you a lot on the books that I've been reading, mainly because I'm not getting very far with one of them. But let me just jump right in to the first one. So for Shadow and Bone, I'm busy Currently busy buddy reading this with my best friend and um, we are both enjoying it immensely. It is amazing. I stopped in the middle of a chapter. Okay. I had to read up until chapter 15 yesterday and I didn't get to it. I am in the middle of chapter 13, I think. But yeah, my best friend said it's, it's quite interesting. Um, it will keep me on my toes. So I'm excited to jump further into this. I think we're reading up until chapter 20 today, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we might see if we could finish this book before tomorrow because it's just, yeah, it sucks you. I don't have a lot to say about this book. Me and, I'm just enjoying the vibes. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, sometimes I have a lot to say about a book and the other times I'm just like, meh, it's good. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, jumping to what the river knows. So I am currently 34% in this book. I don't even know if I am correct. Okay, 35. I stopped in the middle of a chapter. I see I like doing that nowadays. It is such a good book. It is a very descriptive book. Like, you get a lot of 
the writer explains a lot of what is happening in Egypt, Egypt, what is happening in Egypt and how the places look. And every time the author explains something, I just go to the mummy and what I've seen there. So my brain's just like, I'm correlating with that. Um, I am very curious and suspicious of Enos's her uncle because he's doing very weird stuff and he doesn't want Enos around and I'm just like the moment you don't want your niece to be around after her parents died and she's looking for answers instant red flag for me I'm like you're hiding something but I don't think I have come to the crux of the story uh there's it's her busy in there where Enos explains that her uncle is doing weird stuff which raises alarms but at the same time, I think like that's diversions. Maybe he is actually a good guy and Ines is just reading it wrong and he's working for a bad guy or something along those lines. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just reading and hoping <laughs> that I can finish this by tomorrow. Hey everyone, it's been a day. <laughs> Are you getting a different angle because I'm too lazy to go into the study right now and hook this on my tripod? So... This is what you're getting. Anyway, so this morning I finished Shadow and Bone. <sighs> I'm still torn of what I should give it. Like, yes, it had fantasy elements in it. And yes, it was something new, something I'm not used to, of which I really liked. I just realized my, my face is pretty red, so excuse that. <laughs> I was just in the car and the car was hot. Anyway, so I finished Shadow and Bone. I don't know if I should hold it up because everyone knows how it looks like. But anyway, so... I'm torn <laughs> between giving it a three stars because it was good and giving it a four stars. Pfft, I don't know. The four stars was merely because of the magical elements in it and the fantasy elements in it. But the three stars was, it was okay to me. It wasn't, I feel like the hype was too hypey. <laughs> I don't know. I, I still don't know how I feel. I'm going to hear what my best friend's thoughts are about these. But yeah, I think this falls under the category of I'm giving the start of a series of three stars merely because I'm hoping the the next book would be it it has to be have a wow factor because let me break it down to you the darkling i knew was fishy uh from the beginning i just i felt on edge with him maybe because his name's the darkling so i was just like mm, some someone's acting suspicious anyway and then mel um i've been shipping them from like page one so <laughs> i was just like what is happening with the two of you so those are my thoughts so far um i don't know Maybe I should give it a... I, I think I'm going to give it a three and a half, maybe because it's, like, in the middle day. Um, like, I, I like the series. Let me put it like that. I do like the beginning of this book. I really do. But it's hard to explain, okay? It's just, like, I feel I need, I need more to give an overall feeling. So <laughs> that is me. That's going to be me. Now, my plan is to finish what the river... What, yeah, what the river knows. So, but before we do that, I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee. Hey everyone, so welcome to the end of the reading vlog. Finished What the River Knows last night. <sighs> I'm still reeling about that ending. I thought it was going to be a standalone book. It's not. That ending of that book had me sitting in a freeze position for like two minutes. And my husband was like, you can put down your hands right now. I'm like, no, I can't. There's no way I can't. I was sitting there baffled about that ending. So let's just talk about that ending for a second. I can't. Let's just talk about the book for a second. So there's plot twists upon plot twists. You cannot trust any character in this book. None of them. None whatsoever. <laughs> Sometimes it was slow, especially yesterday when I was trying to read like, the half of the rest of the book. I don't know. It felt very slow paced to me at some stages, mostly because it's a very descriptive narrative. I love that. Because I just got this nice sense of where they actually were. I, I mean, if you watch The Mummy or Death on the Nile, you would know, you know, kind of what the story is about. Or how the, the setting look. Um, but, it, I don't know, the description just gives us, you know, like a more interesting feel to it. And I love that. And then, like I say, the characters, you can't trust anyone. I'm not even sure our main character is a trustworthy narr narrator. Because... <laughs> So many. I was debating on giving it four stars, but then that ending sold me. That ending was just like, and I put on my review, I need to know more. Like, 
seriously i really do need to know more because what just happened besides the fact that it was sometimes slow i would actually give it like a medium paste overall it's just that it took me a while to get through it because i don't know sometimes your reading hits a slump and you don't want to read too much so yeah anyway that is going to be in for <laughs> that is going to be in of why can't i do an outro that is going to be the end of the reading vlog yeah if you guys enjoyed it please remember to like subscribe and comment down below if you would most likely read what the river knows i would highly suggest it, it i think it's one of my top recommended lists <laughs> of 2023 so uh, not that i have a lot <laughs> but you know that would be number one anyway and i'll see you guys in the video next week bye <laughs>